What's going on everyone? So today we are looking at Jumia Technologies, the so-called Amazon of Africa, and the huge move today. But first, here are the numbers. We've got a rise of $1.99 per share or 23.33%. JMIA currently trades at $10.52 per share. 52 week low is 2.15, 52 week high is 23.90. Short interest is 42.66%. Market cap is just under 8. 800 million and volume today is 35 million. Also, I'm posting videos every trading day on the most popular stock each day. So hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out. Now, getting right into things, Jumia has been one of the most popular stocks this summer, surging more than 800%. Some people who bought during the March COVID crash at the low of around two bucks a share made some serious money. Just looking at this chart, for anyone hearing about Jumia, they are an e-commerce company that operates in Africa, but has been expanding its businesses into other categories like Amazon has. Recently this summer, tons of interest sparked in the stock. With coronavirus keeping people isolated, there was a lot of speculation that Jumia would benefit like Amazon or JD.com has, but that was violently extinguished after their earnings report in August. Jumia's report was notably disappointing because the bullish thesis was on their potential for growth and to take advantage of the massive market Africa has to offer. Sadly, in their report, they had a considerable decline in merchandise volume of 13%. And merchandise volume is a measure of the value of goods sold in their platform. So clearly, this is a crucial figure and not a good one to miss on. But they did beat on revenue expectations by $7 million, despite being a decline, and also increased their marketplace revenue. And the marketplace has become more of Jumia's focus, with attracting lots of third-party transactions versus independently selling goods. The three things that were encouraging to me were these numbers. The first is that their gross profit increased, which has lowered their total losses. The second is they increased their customer base by 40%, which is what they definitely need. And finally, the most exciting to me was that Jumia Pay volume rose 106%. I'm going to talk about today's move in just a sec, but here is an extremely compact review of the company and their business model. Hang with me here. So of course, in the center, at the core, we have Jumia's e-commerce platform. Jumia conglomerates over 80,000 vendors for customers in 12 out of 54 of Africa's countries to purchase goods from. This to me is what makes Jumia so promising. Transactions like buying food or a shovel or mirror occur all the time in Africa, but because of the lack of development infrastructure with the internet, they have to occur in physical proximity and in select areas. Jumia is trying to do what Amazon did as the internet grew in Western culture in the 2000s, which was offer people convenience and a massive selection of goods at their fingertips. Now as smartphone ownership and internet connectivity increases in Sub-Saharan Africa, with over 500 million people connected to the internet, which is around 50% of their population, it seems logical that the people would find Jumia very appealing. Moving on, Jumia also has a platform called Jumia Pay, which is quickly growing and has potential to catch on huge. I'm a big fan of Jumia Pay because it offers security in transactions, like for food or other goods, which can eliminate the risks of fraud or crime that is prevalent in Africa. Jumia also has a food delivery service called Jumia Food. Similar to Uber Eats, Postmates, or Grubhub, they deliver food right to you. This seems really well-timed to have at this time of year because coronavirus has likely attracted people to this service, especially considering how hard South Africa got hit by the virus. On top of that, the dangers of violence in some parts of Africa probably make it a lot more safe to stay home and order something than to go out and risk your safety. And then some smaller subservices they talk about on their website are Jumia Party or Jumia Now and Jumia Travel. Jumia Party offers beverage services for parties and gatherings. Jumia Now is kind of like an Amazon Prime with expedited e-commerce delivery. And Jumia Travel helps connect people with travel agencies and hotels. So finally, here we are at today's move. We learned via a press release earlier today, Thursday, October 8th, that Mundia, which is a tech and media company, is partnering with Jumia to launch a gaming subset for Jumia called Jumia Games. It will be available on the Jumia Pay app and will be available in five African countries at first, Egypt, Nigeria, Morocco, Kenya, and Ghana, and it will later include Tunisia and Cote d'Ivoire. It will be a subscription service and Jumia Pay consumers who pay it will have full access. Executive Vice President of Jumia acknowledges saying, 
We have always been at the forefront of providing our consumers with the latest and best products and services. With the launch of this new category on Jumia Pay app, we are providing our consumers with an exciting digital gaming and entertainment experience. With the help of our partner, Mundia, consumers can enjoy entertainment services through our Jumia Pay app in addition to other digital and financial services. And this will be around a 1.5 euros charge subscription service per month. And this definitely isn't something that's going to transform the revenues, but it will certainly increase the awareness and brand in Africa around this company. And that will certainly be a positive for them. And of course, it was really smart connecting this with Jumia Pay, which will help increase their volume on Jumia Pay platform. And some of you may know that this is my fourth video on Jumia. The, country, the company interests me a lot, but it also comes with high risk. I've really enjoyed learning about Africa, so recently I set up a second channel, which I will be focusing on investing in African companies. The link is in the bio, and I plan on starting to post there relatively soon. So let me know by clicking the thumbs up button below if you are interested in this and going ahead and subscribing to both channels. I appreciate the feedback. But talking a little bit more about risk, Jumia went up to almost 50 bucks a share last year after its IPO in April of 2019. People pretty much were piling in just after hearing it being called the Amazon of Africa. Obviously, when we got some reports of possible fraud and a face-to-face -face with reality after the earnings, the stock crumbled to around 2 bucks a share, but recently has gained some steam, especially this summer, with more people investing in the stock market and bullishness in e-commerce because of COVID. So if you're planning on investing, just be aware that the company faces a lot of barriers to ultimately becoming a profitable money-making machine that Amazon is. And the stock price has been very volatile, so be warned. I'm waiting for the next few earnings reports to make a decision to invest in the company. Even if it jumps up 30 to 50% in the short term, the valuation is still so cheap with regards to its potential. Take special notice to its potential. It's more important for me to make sure the company is something I want to be invested in that I'm willing to miss out on a few months of being in early if this is in fact the big winner. And if it's not in fact the big winner, then I will have saved myself a big waste of time and loss of capital. So I want to see increased traffic, more customers, and greater value of merchandise trading on their platform, unlike last report. So stay tuned to the next reports. But that's it for today. As always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider hitting that subscribe button, liking the video, and hope to catch you next time. See ya.